Hi everyone, Richard here. Botticelli's Primavera, shown here in its frame, is sometimes thought of as a sister painting to the birth of Venus, discussed in the previous video. Early Renaissance works, Primavera is thought to have been painted between about 1477 to 1482, Venus a little later, around 1485-86 and as mentioned in the previous video, they are both quite large. The Uffizi gives the size of Primavera as 207 by 319 centimeters. Unlike with Venus, this is almost exactly the proportions of photographs of the framed work. After finding the surprising geometry that seemed to fit the birth of Venus so well, I was keen to see what I might find with Primavera. And assuming they might share a geometry, the first thing I did was place a pentagon pentagram over the painting. Unlike the birth of Venus, it fit quite nicely right in the center. Especially nice is the way the nymph Flora and the head and arms of Chloris here fit in the triangle on the right of the pentagon. As well, the way two of the three graces lean into the side of the pentagon here emphasizing the angle of the pentagon's side, the same angle as the side of the pentagram that starts in the top middle and goes down along Venus's arm and the side of Flora. It's not a perfect fit, but the really interesting thing here is the geometry that develops. Stay with me. For this one, let's assume we are assistants in Botticelli's studio sometime in the year just before he started to work on Primavera. We're looking over his shoulder as he starts to plot out his ideas for the painting. We watch him as he first draws a perfect pentagon, enclosing a pentagram, both inside a circle. Then he draws a line at the top and bottom of the circle. Perhaps having in mind an approximate shape for the rectangle, setting the point of his compass at the top of the pentagram, he draws an arc that passes through the bottom points of the pentagram pentagon like this. Then he thinks, if I extend the top sides of the pentagon to this arc, it could establish a nicely proportioned rectangle. So he draws sides through these two points. All cleaned up, that looks pretty interesting. Perhaps here Botticelli noticed that if he draws a horizontal line from those two points on the sides, it passes right through the points where the sides of the pentagram cross, marked here with X's. But perhaps he's not surprised by this. He may already know that all these points marked with X's are the golden mean points of each side of the pentagram. And maybe he just realized, as I just did now, that these points are on the golden mean of the horizontal dimensions of the rectangle, here the golden mean being a point, C, here, on a line, A, B, so that the short end of the line, A, C, is to the long end of the line, C, B, as the long end is to the whole, A, B. At this point, Botticelli might have been pretty happy with this geometry, an intricate tying together of a pentagon pentagram with the golden mean, at that time often called the divine proportion, but if he didn't stop there and continue to investigate this interesting bit of geometry, he may also have discovered that if he extended the sides of the pentagram down, like this, lines drawn from those points to the upper corners of the rectangle just nicely touch the sides of the circle, enclosing the pentagon pentagram. We saw this in the Birth of Venus video, but remember, this painting, Primavera, was painted earlier. If Botticelli did discover this geometry about this time, he would have discovered it here first. Definitely a beautiful and in many ways surprising bit of geometry. If Botticelli was looking for a geometry to use as the substructure for Primavera, he certainly could have done worse. And the dimensions of this geometry? As mentioned at the beginning, the Uffizi gives the size of Primavera as 207 centimeters tall by 319 centimeters wide. If this geometry were 319 centimeters wide, it would be 207.35 centimeters tall, 
nearly exactly the same. So did Botticelli use these related geometries for Primavera and Birth of Venus? I'm not sure. There's no solid proof. But I wouldn't be surprised. This interesting geometry doesn't stop here. In my next video, I will show you several other variations, including two that create rectangles with the exact same proportions of the Primavera geometry, but in remarkably different ways. Also, for those not familiar with some of the terms I use in these videos, at the end of the next video I will give a brief refresher course on those terms and some basic geometry, including how to construct a golden rectangle and a pentagon. For information on my own work, please visit my website at rtdavis.com. You can also find me on Instagram at Richard Thomas Davis Artist. Thanks for joining me.